Whenever we're going to conduct the uh, binocular visual field effects in a person, it has its own pathological basis, basically. Uh, it is concerning the visual cortex. It is concerning the occipital cortex, usually. So over here, we're just going to focus on the binocular visual field effects over here and what are the different causes uh, that can correlate towards the binocular visual field effects. So one of the important points that we've already discussed is that the optic nerve Nerve from the medial side or from the nasal side, the fibers are going to decussate towards the opposite side. So it is one of the facts that has to be remembered over here. Any lesion that is affecting the optic chasma is going to manifest as a binocular visual field effect as well. So it is one of the factors <clears throat> that we're going to remember over here and is one of the anatomical structures or the anatomical basis that we're going to remember just to move on towards the uh, different findings of the binocular visual field effects in a particular person. The demonstration, how do you basically demonstrate uh, these binocular visual field effects? Of course, so we have the manual methods as well as we have the automated methods ranging from the Ansler grid chats. So we have the Humphreys methods. Uh, then we have the tangential uh, uh, visual fields uh, testing that are being carried out in the particular patients. The cortical areas are affected uh, in a lot of patients as well. So over here, we're just going to focus on these uh, facts that all of these demonstrations have to be carried out quite carefully just to know what is the underlying pathology uh, behind a particular visual field defect in a particular person. The lesions of the visual pathways are affected in a particular way and then we're going to focus on this fact that what uh, at what level, uh, what are the different manifestations that are observed in a particular patient uh, that we're going to discuss uh, in quite briefly uh, through the diagrammatic representations that and we have the pupillary constriction pathways. So again, it's one of the uh, methods or it's one of the ways that we're going to observe um, in this particular patient uh, that there can be the pupillary constriction pathways that are observed in this particular way. The binocular fields uh, that are the binocular vision that is being affected in a particular way, we have the right eye view and on the other hand we have the left eye view and then we have the binocular vision. So binocular vision is basically in simpler words we can say that is basically when we are looking or we are taking the help of both of our eyes to have a clearer vision, it's known as a binocular vision or binocular fields. The binocular field combines the two monocular visual fields with fovea aligned with uh, one another. That is the pink area in the image to the right. So it is the binocular fields, it's the complete definition of the binocular fields over here. The left and the right fields are seen by both left and the right eye. The monocular crescent for each eye is very important. The blue for the left eye and the green for the right eye and only seen by the nasal retina of the same eye. So it's basically the involvement of the retina. It's basically the involvement of the uh, complete anatomical structures that are forming a complete visual field uh, pathway in a particular patient. Over here, you can have a look at this. These are the upper fields and then we have the lower fields over here. Understand the difference between the monocular visual field of the left eye versus the binocular left visual field and vice versa for the right counterparts. So one should know so this is basically the right visual field on the Amsler grid chart and this is the left visual field on the Amsler grid chart. These are the upper fields of the right and the left subsequently and these are the lower fields of the right and the left vision uh, subsequently. So this is basically uh, showing an Amsler grid chart that is basically focusing um, on the binocular visual field in a particular patient whom we are talking about. The demonstration is quite easy. Again, we had uh, these manual testing methods and we had these automated testing methods for this phenomena. 
the this is basically a diagram which is showing the stimulation area the activities of the daily life reading writing eating anything that we can think of is basically dependent upon this binocular uh, visual field of a person look straight ahead is one or fix the gaze is these are the uh, prerequisites for the detection of the visual field effects close your right eye so it's basically you test the eye uh, one by one uh, for the visual field effects and move your fingers to the right eye until it disappears and open the right eye to see the pencil in the right templar uh, monocular crescent of the visual field so this is how you basically um, demonstrate the visual field effects in an easier way in a particular person the basic concepts that are involved over here the image of the object in the visual field is inverted and reversed right to left on the retina temporal field of the left eye the nasal retina of the left eye is involved the nasal field of the left eye the temporal retina of the left eye is involved again then we have the superior field of the left eye the inferior retina of the left eye is involved the inferior field of the left eye is basically when the superior retina of the left eye is involved so this is basically one general rule that you have to remember is that the image of the objects are inverted and reversed right to the left on the retina so these are the basic concepts that you have to focus on similarly images inverted and reversed for the right eye as well knowing the cortical areas the primary visual cortex area 17 is very important over here located on either side of and within the calcarine fissure upper fields project to the lingual gyrus the lower fields they project to the cuneus and the macular representation in most caudal area 17 is involved the peripheral field representation in the rostral two-thirds of the area 17 is also involved over here and then we have the lesions of the area 17 results in the blindness in the contralateral visual field so basically the mainstay that you have to remember over here that is basically the area 17 that is involved for the uh, that is basically the primary visual cortex and that that is basically what we have to focus on over here the association visual cortex that is basically the associated areas are area 18 and 19 input from the area 17 and elsewhere is needed over here and it deals with the complex aspects of the visions and the lesions are they basically result in the visual agnosia over here the definitions uh, or the primary terminologies that you have to focus on are the diplopia that is basically the doubling of the vision we have the amblyopia we have the scotomas that is basically the pathological blind spot Spots. they are known as the scotomas um, in a particular person strabismus is basically the squinting phenomena that is normally observed uh, in the individuals we have the quadrat quadratinopia that is basically the visual fields if they are affected uh, in all of the four quadrants that is basically known as the quadratinopia then we have the heminopsia involving the nasal fields or the temporal fields we have the heteromnomous defects it can be a lower nasal field that is affected it can be an upper temporal field that is affected as well so it, these are the uh, heteronymous defects the, we have the homonymous and the congruous defects involved the incongruous and the altitudinal defects uh, they can also be seen uh, in a particular patient as well the lesions of the visual pathways it's again one of the diagrammatic representation over here uh, first of all it can be when there is a total blindness of the right eye due to the complete lesion of the right optic nerve it can be a bipolar hemianopia due to the midline chasmatical lesion so if it is a lesion at the chasmatical level it is going to be a bipolar hemianopia if it is going to be a right nasal hemianopia due to a lesion involving the right perichiasmatical area, over here you can see a left hemonymous hemianopia due to the lesions or the pressure on the right optic tract. The left homonymous inferior quadrinopia due to the involvement of the lower right optic radiations. Then we have the left homonymous superior quadrinopia due to the involvement of the upper right optic radiations. Then we have the left homonymous hemianopia due to the lesions of the right occipital lobe.
So these are the different lesions of the visual pathways uh, that can be observed in these individuals. The papillary constriction pathway is one of the another pathway that is involving over here the optic nerve, the optic chiasma. Then we have the posterior commissure and the peritectal areas, the edinger vest westphal nucleus. It can be affected or the superior branchium and the lateral geniculate nucleus. So this is a complete papillary light reflex pathway. Any abnormality in all of these anatomical structures can result in a defect in the pupillary light reflex in this particular individual. So over here we just discussed the binocular visual field effects and what are the effects of the different levels of the lesions and how are they going to manifest in a particular patient. So that is the end of this section. Thank you for watching. Scaria.com